Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday night segment of the Outer Realm. We are broadcasting here on United Public Radio Network 105.3 FM from beautiful New Orleans. We are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at, ah, you guessed it, Folgers Coffee, who have been part of our journey since the very beginning, and we hope until the very end. We are also sponsored by Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, a.k.a. Justin Snicker. Uh, he is an award-winning composer of Halloween horror, sci-fi, dark wave electronic music, and his music can be found anywhere that good music can be found. Uh, today, Amelia and I actually pre-recorded uh, the interview with Dr. Uh, Terea Simonson, or Simonson, as he would say, um, and he was basically picking up where he left off with his book called A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal. Um, tonight, you can find Amelia and I in the show airing on Facebook, The Outer Realm, of course, uh, Joe Montaldo, UFO Undercover, Canada's Most Haunted, UFO Paranormal Radio and United Public Radio, and we head over to YouTube on UFO Gods and Extraterrestrials, uh, UFO Paranormal, and of course, our very own Outer Realm. So if you like the content, please... Give us a subscribe. Show us some support. We love and appreciate you. And we are very appreciative of the support. Tonight we will be in chat. Um, we are we had a bit of technical difficulties, so we're doing things a little bit different tonight. Hey, Zach, I will be here on the soundboard. I will be able to put up your comments. And Amelia and I will do our very best to answer them. And we will post the answers also up on the screen. But like I said, we had a little bit of tech difficulties um, getting started today. And now, okay, Amelia says right now she is on the Outer Realm Facebook. And I'll make sure I man um, YouTube. But either way, all comments and answers will be put up here on the screen. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to drop out. And we are going to get started with the actual after of course, the tech difficulties is where the recording is going to start. Hey, Adriana, Zach, man, Michelle, and Bubbles in the house over on Facebook. So let me drop out. Let's get the show on the road. Amazon. <laughs> yeah, we're validating. <laughs> hello 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 thanks How are you? yeah i'm i'm uh, exceptionally well thank you oh Great. fantastic what's the weather like on your side of the world right now uh, right now it's rainy but we have had some sunny here days too. so it is yeah. uh, say early summer yeah it's, it's like here it's the same mm. it's mm. it hasn't it, we had a few good days where we hit 30 you know, mm -hmm. Celsius, and now we're at 22 and, and waking up to 11 because <laughs> oh. of the rain, because of the rain. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it, it's yeah. feeling a little bit like October. Right? Yeah. Okay. No, uh, here it, it has been quite warm the last days, but today it's, it's, uh, it's a rainy day. Yes. Yes. That's uh, okay. Here too. It's raining here too. But I mm. love the storms. They're soothing for me. Uh, I like the variation. You know, uh, yeah. if it's just hot all the time, you, it, you're getting too much in a way. So uh, two days a week with rain or gray weather is very. It's uh, good nice. For me. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I I personally like it. I love thunderstorms. So. I prefer yeah, it rains yeah, yeah. at night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Really. Yes, uh, it is yeah, very nice. that's why I want a tin roof. <laughs> Excuse me. I want a tin roof so that ah, when it rains, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I can yeah. I can fall asleep to that. 
So. I don't yeah. need a tin roof, you know. The it's uh, yeah, a normal roof is uh, quite sufficient <laughs> to get the effect. Yeah, no, I want a tin roof because I want to keep you up all night. <laughs> no, not me. It just gets me sleep. I put yeah, it on yeah. YouTube on a thunderstorm, and it's a blackout, and I just leave it on all night so I could sleep. Oh, I yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. I hear a lot of voices, so for me, I need that white noise. Yeah, to, to get away from. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you back. Um, Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, the, the conversation. I, mean, I, 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 I will. I will tell you. You know, I have a kind of written agenda where I, I uh, say, uh, plot in. Uh, in in every engagement I have with uh, different media and so and uh, for this date you know it what is spe uh, specified then to tonight I will be uh, on air with the two nice ladies. Oh, Aww, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we thank look you. forward to having. We you think so. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, oh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people listening because the last show did really really well. Um, okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There was a huge absolutely. interest good. in your conversation for sure. Oh, for yeah. sure. And there was just so much. <laughs> we figured we're going to need a part two for sure. And here mm -hmm. we are. So why don't we just start off by recapping a little bit about um, just to <clears throat> catch people up. And for those who who missed the first show, you should go check out the archive. First off, is what y'all should be doing. <laughs> but um, just to pick up where we left off a little bit, recap. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the book. And then yes. we'll we'll go from there. That's good. I will just can I just uh, do I have time to adjust my screen a bit? Anything absolutely. Like, you absolutely. should have seen what we did before you got on. <laughs> Aside <laughs> from belly aching about Amazon, sorry. Oh, I've had nothing but <laughs> tech issues. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. 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 Um, because it's uh, uh, this is a running text at the bottom, and it uh, appears a bit visually confusing to me. Oh, our little, our little runner at the bottom. Yes, the this, uh, what yeah. is called this line running at the bottom all the yeah. time. Do you want me to remove it? Uh, if you have the possibility. I can do anything. Ah. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> Bam. Ah. Magic. Fantastic. Thanks. Magic. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little easy. You know, um, uh, I, I think a friend of mine, he th thinks I'm autistic and he might be right, you know. And there is, in fact, uh, also a connection between this kind of uh, semantic autism and uh, the paranormal because this openness and a certain, say, uh, permeability of the ego. So right. I, I get very easily disturbed by if we are in a cafe and there's sitting a person, you know, uh, what is called uh, having a spoon in his coffee in the other side of the room, you know, I will hear it. And uh, yeah, so uh, yes. when this text is running at the bottom here, you know, it drags my attention away from yeah. you. Right. I'm, I'm like that too, but Michelle calls uh -oh. me a squirrel. <laughs> I, like a I can pick moment. up everything everywhere. I would have yes. need a really, really good detective because I can pick up stuff from everywhere. Yes, but, yes. Yeah. I, 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 I will tell you a, a great story that I heard earlier today. But should I say save it for later in the program? Or, no, no, or, no, no, it's your you show. Like to go. Yeah, uh, yeah, just, back uh, a friend of mine. She is taking an exam at the university in Belgium, uh, and it's about animal psychology. And so, and. Um, <clears throat> She uh, had been up to her uh, last exams, final exams, and uh, they had asked questions that she had not, you know, read the books for. Uh, it was the side effects of serotonin and melatonin and GABA and all these kind of things. And she is a very intuitive person, and she had not read, say, the curriculum for these subjects. Uh, she had, say, missed and read some some other book for for for, for this exam uh, and she started just to you know opening up and tuning into the situation and so and she started you know to just jot down what came to her from this mental field collective consciousness whatever we should call it yeah. and she ended up having 18 correct out of 20 questions without having read the curry curriculum Oh, wow. <laughs> she was one of the best in her class. For sure. Wow, good for her. Well, she <laughs> was so, so stunned about that. She didn't know, uh, she didn't know how she did it, you know. Mm -hmm. And she's very natural, intuitive. She does not have a very, say, 
elevated uh, say technique or right. studying occultism or anything like that she's just uh, uh, as i said this was an exam uh, related to, to study of animals so she is a natural say animal yes. communicator yes oh, yeah fantastic. nice yeah she's living okay. in in have been living in thailand for many years and she went wow. to a kind of sanctuary for retired elephants because you know from the buddhist perspective oh. they are also soul and uh, yes. and uh, she started to communicate with one of the elephants there and uh, the tamer he said he had never seen anyone having that direct and immediate contact with elephants before i, so, I um, love elephants i that's feel amazing I, though that's i was amazing. fortunate enough to be able to um ride on one when i was about 11 or 12 years old at the toronto national exhibition and i uh -huh. almost didn't go and my brother pushed me I had yeah. such a connection that I didn't want to get off the elephant after. And I was angry that they had the elephant closed in just for Oh, that. yes. Yes, of yeah. course. It was, a, it was strange to have that understanding. So, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So she has also uh, that kind She's of She's exceptional. She's exceptional. She went to a sanctuary. It's different. <laughs> yes. And uh, also, I must tell you that, uh, and just stop me if you want to speak about, uh, no, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Renaissance Hermitism or Ellis. No. We'll you follow your lead. Go yeah. Uh, because, she, as I said, she's living in Thailand and they have a little dam in uh, in the corner of, of, of the garden. And uh, that is kind of artificial dam, you know, where they have uh, concrete under, and they have yeah. uh, had to do some repair on the concrete. And there are some snakes living in that dam uh, usually uh, yes they are not uh, extremely dangerous but still they have, yeah. they have they are slightly poisonous you know so right. when they were asked to uh, repair uh, repair that dam she went down and speaking calmly to the snakes and explained the situation to them you know and please when you know uh, we'll use your water for a period of time please don't get aggressive and bite anyone because it is no <laughs> harm and the water will be back and so on so. and right. as she told me that the, they did not bite any of her cats or dogs and, and they, she have uh, taken from the streets uh, a number of cats and dogs wow. you know and oh, adopted them. Yeah. she sounds amazing that's nice she is. She yeah, is. she sounds amazing. <laughs> no, and that's today awesome. she was on her exam, as I said, and getting the answers more or less straight out of the air. And uh, 18 mm. out of 20 questions correct without having read the curriculum. No. That's impressive. That's impressive. Very <laughs> definitely, impressive. definitely yeah. what she should be doing. Yes, I think so. I, yeah. I, I'm quite convinced uh, about she uh, have this uh, natural gift. So and also mm -hmm. we can say. Um, uh, part of my book, uh, uh, have, you, have we presented the book this uh, time around? Well, we haven't yet. I, well, I had it on the screen. See? Okay, you have had it on the screen. Well, well, yeah, see, look, look, you can give us a brief introduction. There we go. There we go. <laughs> ah, but, uh, but don't visual the, in the front page or this uh, cover. Yes. You haven't. No, we have not. No. This is this is Will a, I be a, a, allowed to show it to oh, Absolutely. Yeah, the it's link your show. To, the link Just. to Amazon for your for your book <laughs> yes. is uh well is in the um the write up for the show. <clears throat> so people wherever they go they can go click on it right there. But here is the English version and here is the Czech version. So wow. yeah. they are quite that's similar, a beautiful cover. Thank yes. you. I like it quite a lot myself, so yeah, yeah. awesome. Uh, okay. But as a part of the preparation for writing this book, or as I'm saying, my personal interest also, I interviewed close to, I think it must be close to a hundred professional psychics for so many, from so many different traditions, uh, Norwegian, mm -hmm. of course, Sami tradition, uh, say uh, Native uh, Americans, uh, First mm -hmm. Nation Canadians, uh, Jamaica, you know, Gypsy, Rom people and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. And two, two of those uh, clairvoyants that I have uh, dealt most with, uh, they also have told about similar experiences sitting on the exam at school and mm -hmm. suddenly just knowing the answer without knowing how they know and one of them even got problems uh, um, with her um, uh, teacher because of that because you you have to somehow demonstrate how you reach an answer not just present 3.2 you know you can you must yeah okay so that's yes. the weight of the molecule or whatever you know but you have to demonstrate how you calculated this and yes. she couldn't do that she just knew the answer you know so so mm -hmm. uh, extremely intuitive people seem to be able to download this on, on uh, at will yes yeah which mm. is fascinating you know the, is. the human brain is 
only a portion yes. uh, explored. So you can imagine if we were using it to our full potential. And obviously there's some people who um, use it to a much bigger potential. Mm. It makes you wonder though, if we were, if we had that ability, could we physically handle it? Uh, well, that is also some I write about in my book that um, the most famous psychic in Norway, he passed away, say, one and a half years ago. And he was extremely impressive, both as a healer and found, uh, finding missing persons for mm -hmm. the police and for the Red Cross. And so and uh, he said, it's a miracle. I have not become completely mad because, wow. you know, when he was presented to a person uh, as a healer, uh, he, he received uh, a, a close to 50,000 persons from all over mm. the world, yes. Uh, and Crazy. he took in their history, uh, their anxieties, their suffering, uh, something that would happen in the future, and uh, something that had happened a long time back mm. in the past, you know. So he was filled with that information, and getting this overload uh, uh, can be extremely exhausting. So so he, he said that, but he had a kind of... Um, strong religious uh, uh, say conviction is it called uh, he was somehow felt he was destined to do this work and somehow was able to more or less uh, put the burden away to to the higher force in a way so but he said it was it could be very challenging mm -hmm. so, mm, yeah uh, so also some friends of mine uh, uh, visited him at home and uh, they told also he uh, he suddenly, you know, he touched one of my friends and suddenly said, ah, I feel your dad is not uh, <laughs> not very nice to you, you know, and, uh, you know, uh -huh. all this. And, and it's just like, say, uh, watching uh, five movies at the same time, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. and some of them are horror movies and some, of course, are nice, but uh, it's so much impression, so it can be uh, overload. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, especially if you're very empathic, mm. you would feel I, like I think the emotional part of, of that is can be so much worse. Um, I, I, you know, my my empathic um, mm. abilities, I've, I've just learned at an early age to I can push that aside. But mm -hmm. Amelia is like really tuned in. My daughter was the same. Mm. And you just walk by and just break down. And, and, you know, I'm just like, mm. wow. You know, she goes, oh, somebody died there and I could pick this up or yes. there's something going on there. And I'm just like, that would be terrible for me. I, I shelved that. But mm. I, I seem to that's maybe part of my abilities. I've been able to shelve a lot of things. Mm. And, you know, but I know Amelia sometimes just like from it's every it can be draining yeah. when we work. It's really hard. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm completely when we're done working, mm -hmm. I am yes. completely out like I can't. I'm overtired, so I have to stay awake, but my mm. body yes. feels like I've been through the flu without mm. any yeah, 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 I understand. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's really yeah. difficult, but all I do is when I'm driving, like I try to, I tunnel focus now, tunnel vision, mm. and focus on what's in front of me in my everyday mm. life, and I've learned to turn mm. a lot of it off. Mm -hmm. But then again, because of the pandemic, I really haven't been in public places with a lot of people in a while, so uh -huh. I don't know yes. what it's going to be like when I get back oh, out there. Yes. But um, yeah, empath being a strong empath is hell, especially if you go through, if you're if you're visiting a country or you're looking at somewhere where there's historical trauma yes. and yes. Yes. war and things like that, where I happen to live on land where the War of 1812 was actually fought. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yeah. it can be very overwhelming just walking mm. through my backyard, you know? Mm. So. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I can drive mm. by and just start crying because a child, there was a fire nearby. Yes. There, was, there yeah. used to be a school way, 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 way back. Uh -huh. I didn't know. I'm not from this area. I moved to the city from Toronto uh -huh. and okay. I could never drive by. And I always had to take the street because my daughter's best friend lives there to drop her mm. off. Mm. I could never drive by without hyperventilating anxiety and crying. Exactly. And then one day I stopped my truck and I looked and I went, Oh my God, there's a bunch of kids just at the window screaming. They're on yeah, fire. Yeah. Yes. 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 And yeah, that is, um, it's hard. It's a uh, blessing and a curse. It, it takes, I think it takes years to learn what Michelle said, mm. how to turn it off. For me, it's always been easy on off. Yeah. On, off, I can't. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
No, a, a friend of mine, he is uh, from uh, more north in Can uh, I'm living uh, at the tip of south of Norway. Norway is a very, say, long, say, narrow, long mm -hmm. uh, country. Yes, and yeah. uh, a, a guy that I know, he's living in northern uh, country. Um, <clears throat> in fact, he is the nephew of this great psychic that passed away. Um, uh, see, excuse me, there is some battery issue here. I would okay. just have to... Um, no problem. To, no yeah, we're it must be that kind of day because all three mm. of us, yeah, uh, <laughs> and tongue -tied, I, I will just and uh, <laughs> have to change a bit, uh, here, just to give me five sure. seconds. <laughs> no problem. I gotta mute to cough, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Just do what you gotta do. We're just gonna go, yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, I woke up like an hour ago. No. <laughs> Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. Daytime is, um, it's not for the vampires. <laughs> no, no, I don't do well in the daytime. Uh oh, we've lost. Oh, yeah. He's probably rebooting because he has to plug in. Oh, we might need to start this show from now. <laughs> I think it might be a little late. Yeah. Um, <sighs> we're already at 1 30. <laughs> we're, we're already half hour in. Yeah. That's, Wow. Wow. I would have, for me to end it, I would have to completely <laughs> reset up all Excuse over me. again. So it's like, oh no. <sighs> but you know what? Um, I'm back, I think. Not. Hello. Hi, we yeah, are. we no just picture. need you to, okay. to allow camera. your camera. <laughs> I hope it will continue to, 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 to work. No, so just, just a moment. Part. No. So I, okay. I will yeah. press. You see me now? That we yes. can see fine. Oh, yes. yes, there you <laughs> are. Just, just continue about... from where we left. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. This uh, nephew of this um, uh, famous psychic in Norway. Uh, I write quite a lot about him in my book. Um, this uh, guy, uh, old guy that uh, died uh, here, he was, uh, as I say, consulted by so many. But also, it seems to run in the family because one of his children has these abilities, and yeah. also, oh. um, yes, and also his nephew. And uh, this nephew told me that um, uh, uh, he, it made, uh, if he was uh, at a football match, for instance, he suddenly would feel pain in his back, you know, and then. Mm -hmm. The person on the left told him he had some back injury or something, or he would be in a party and uh, suddenly we'd feel kind of a migraine coming on him, you know. And mm -hmm. then the lady of the right, of course, had migraine, you know. So he was picking up uh, unconsciously all the time, uh, and it was very stressful for him. So he uh, did lots of walking in nature, you know, to to, to ground himself. Yes. Yeah. And, but I think he told me it took years before he was able to say open and shut and open and shut. So no, he uses this as a healer. When he works as a healer, of course, he opens. Uh, and uh, when he is going to the store and there's 20 other people there, he, he shuts down. So he is, but he told me it, it took quite a, a long time to, to regulate this uh, flow of Absolutely. information. Mm Absolutely. -hmm. When, you, when you shut down as a, as a, a medium and something does get through you have to respond because that has to be some powerful energy to get through your shield of closing mm. off everything so i find i feel it's important to recognize that message and and try to carry it out or assist I when am, it's like I, that uh, yeah mm -hmm. definitely but you have to cultivate i often it perhaps it's a trivial uh, say metaphor, but I compare to uh, play the violin because uh, people say, "Oh, it's uh, terribly, it sounds terrible, and it's not possible." But you know, after training, you can be beautiful. Mm -hmm. sounds, you know, so my it, my it, father was self-taught in violin. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I can't play an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you can play the instrument of your soul. You know, so like, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That was smooth. That was smooth. <laughs> well, there's got to be something to this, to the whole, um, the abilities, the gifts, um, psychic phenomenon, because I mean, it's been used throughout centuries. Kings mm -hmm. would have oracles and seers. Mm -hmm. People would would flock. You know, a, a king would would go into battle before going into battle. Would have an oracle and say, "Tell me what you see. Tell me how to defeat, you oh, know, yes. these, this 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 other army." Um, even, I mean, 
we can get technical, but I mean, even military for sure, oh, even yes. in modern times, CIA, all of it. So there's mm. definitely something to all that. Mm. And from a parapsychology standpoint, it makes you wonder why would all of these big organizations put money into um, learning more about them, utilizing them? Mm. I don't know. Uh, I, I have a, a chapter in my book uh, about the military use of, of these phenomena. It was a, a program, uh, probably many of our viewers know this program from before, but I can mention it's called Stargate. And mm -hmm. uh, they trained uh, spies to use clairvoyance. They call it remote viewing uh, mm -hmm. in the military term uh, to, to use that to locate, uh, say, enemy positions and maneuvers and uh, the enemy mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. as partly today it was russia or soviet russia at that time so mm -hmm. so uh, so they tried to uh, and and uh, all the those involved in in the program the physicists the, the agent uh, the officers uh, said that these things are working uh, but the stability of the phenomena was the problem because if you have slept bad that night you know or have quarreled with your spouse or whatever you know so uh, the impressions are very subtle so um, it's not always so easy Easy to somehow uh, what is called uh, to, to, to get away these kind of sources of error when you, you're into this so if you are to base big military operations you know with hundred thousand people and lots of material and so and the, the say the impression comes from a person that has had a bad night's sleep you know that can be uh, tricky to put it that way so mm -hmm. uh, the phenomena was not uh, deemed uh, unreal in any way but it was deemed kind of not fully reliable always and that is enough that uh, they might be dismissed by the military as a kind of sound information you you have to have really solid evidence of course to to start big maneuvers and uh, operations mm -hmm. absolutely um because even now <clears throat> i'm just trying to see if my memory serves me correctly was mm -hmm. it was it the soviets who used baba venga uh, well, uh, it was a, 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 Bul a, Bul a Bulgarian, uh, Bulgaria. but uh, of course okay. they were in the say East Bloc, so they were influenced by by uh, the Soviets, of course. But uh, okay. it, it was a kind of Bulgarian icon uh, that was studied by a famous uh, professor in psychology um, or, or psychiatry. Uh, mm. Uh, Georgi Lotsanov, uh, which mm -hmm. I also happened to uh, had the honor to meet here in Norway. Very nice. Wow. So I discuss also that a little in my book. Uh, and uh, she, uh, he said she was famous for her predictions. Um, and uh, he observed her uh, in a period for about 20 years. So he had wow. uh, the possibility to follow up and see uh, whether or not these predictions came true. And he mm -hmm. said that about 80% of what she had predicted came true, in fact. So that's impressive. She, she had some amazing accuracy, but I believe Nostradamus worked for the Di Medici family and mm -hmm. then later for France because of, of her marriage to the king. I believe that Nostradamus probably had a higher accuracy rate if he could understand what he was seeing because he saw because he saw so far into the future mm. he didn't know mm. what airplanes were mm. like his 911 his his you know his vernacular was limited it, it, mm. he didn't have yes everything mm. he wouldn't know it was a modern world i the mean the trains are very time. hard to decipher also though yes. they're very that, hard that's... and but when Extremely you look at good it, points both of what you mentioned there yes mm. well i right. have this I've, I studied a lot about him when I was first opening up with all of this and um, I wanted to understand why there was a connection and and of course they used yes. him uh. to gain the throne and to fight wars mm. you know so mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what is interesting, if you um, say you say uh, exactly he getting his vision uh, back in uh, the 16th century and uh, they didn't have, uh, say, planes and, and such things. And that is also, uh, yeah. uh, uh, say, kind of problem uh, when you go to older UFO uh, visions um, or sightings. Um, yeah. For instance, uh, 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 we discussed him a bit last time, uh, Jacques Vallée, a famous yes. astronomer yeah. and also uh, written lots about UFOs. Um, 
or no, yes. they call it an unidentified aerial phenomenon. That's the new term, I understand. Right. Uh, but uh, we use UFO, I think everybody will understand. Yeah, that. UFO. I think USB. Our, our generation will always okay. use UFO, but yeah. Yes, UAP. exactly. So yeah. he told, for instance, uh, you have uh, sightings in uh, Germany in the Middle Ages where people describe a ship sailing across mm -hmm. uh, the heavens. Yes. Yeah, and uh, that was the closest they could come to, to say... Um, Yes. Uh, yeah. What this is, is what it is. Retell uh, their vision. So, so that is, of course, a problem. Also, you can go to the uh, perhaps uh, you go back to the biblical prophecies from okay. Ezekiel. Uh, he mm -hmm. also uh, describes some kind of a uh, big wagon Wheel. with wheels, right. you know, turning and so. And uh, yes. of course, a wagon was the most, say, advanced technology probably he knew from his daily life. So. So mm -hmm. Eric Van Daniken, where he mentioned the chariots of the gods, like yes. Yes. gold chariots. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I think it is a matter of just, you know, terminology. But I mean, you always have to do is look at Enoch, who was probably the most famous contactee, mm -hmm. abductee. You yes. know, mm -hmm. you really delve into Enoch, you'll see all kinds of ab abduction. You know, yes. like it's all the criteria. Everything is is right there. Old paintings. Mm. Um, you know, Da Vinci was said to have had ET mm. experiences. Like you could really mm. go pretty far back. And I think it just comes back. Like when I look at an old painting mm. and you see, you know, Mother Mary, for example, yes. and in the background, you see a craft in the sky and the uh -huh. shape of a saucer. You have to say like, how do we miss that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, yes. Now we're more versed. Mm. So we can look at an image or petroglyphs, things like that. We could see this looks like the type of, of extraterrestrial it is, which now we know because of technology, the mm. larger head and the big almond shaped eyes tend to be a gray. Mm. Mm. Uh, what is also interesting today, uh, yes, very good points. I, um, I'm no expert in UFOs, but of course I, I mean, know some basic things. So, uh, right. Uh, and uh, Jacques mm. Vallée made me uh, yes. aware of, of, of this, say, uh, that it was very difficult to historically represent uh, what mm. is what people no, don't know from their daily lives so uh, mm -hmm. if they saw an angel for instance that might mm -hmm. or might not of course but, but might be an alien you know because uh, wings is the uh, ability to swiftly be from one place to another you know like that yes, and, uh, i agree so, yeah no, so i, I agree not, whether or I not think... the wings have feathers or anything, you know, that is trivial, you know, this, that is not the point of the thing. It's more how yeah. you, uh, it's the it same. Also in the, in, yes, but, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's the perception, right? It's yes, the perception. something flying. But it's it's yeah. the mindset as well. Religion teaches you one thing. Yes. And science will teach you something else. Ufology mm. will teach you something else. Mm. Yeah. You but know, this, but... this is why remote viewers and mediums have different languages. That I yes. laugh at books that they say, this is psychic language, learn psychic language. I'm like, no, everybody has their own. Mm -hmm. There isn't a language. It's not like French, German, English. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. your own perception. That's and understanding. Extremely, extremely important because people ask yeah. me sometimes what in, in, in they have a dream it's very strong you know and what is the meaning of the symbols and then i uh, refer to cg jung the famous swiss psychiatrist he said he would never analyze one dream uh, you have to have a series of dreams because then you learn the say symbolic language of that specific person mm -hmm. and then yeah get the true meaning or at least closer to the true meaning of the dream so that's very important also i have discussed this aspect with many professional clairvoyants and many of them are not really uh, so have no not a profound understanding of this um, for instance if you have been up to an exam and ask a clairvoyant person uh, will i say pass this exam or will i you know <laughs> uh, what is called falter uh, in this exam uh, then the, the can uh, uh, appear a picture for 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 the clairvoyant person, and uh, but if that uh, say picture shows you with a paper smiling, what mm -hmm. does that uh, does that indicate you hope uh, to pass the exam, or is it uh, the fa uh, the factual outcome that you how are they deciphering it basically? Yes. 
Exactly. You, okay. you're, you're helping me. Thanks a lot. So, but many psychics do not have a kind of a precise uh, understanding how they function in this respect. But one I discussed with, she said uh, the picture will appear in different colors. Mm -hmm. If it is, for instance, say you have a fear for not passing the exam, then the pictures will appear in, in red. Mm -hmm. If it was, uh, you hope it could be uh, the same picture could appear in white or yellowish, mm -hmm. or, or if the, in the factual outcome, what will in fact happen with this exam, will you pass or will you not, then the vision or the picture will uh, appear blue. You know, so mm. from the picture uh, as color, she would be able to decipher the meaning of of, of this picture. So but she associated everything with color. Yes. Okay. So that is her that say, her way. Right. Key, key to understand. So, right. But, but okay, this have, uh, as uh, as uh, you said here, it has to be learned, and um, it's so subtle these things. So people do not generally understand this uh, very well. Not uh, even say professional psychics. I have found after interviewing mm -hmm. so many of them. So, so mm -hmm. I was quite impressed when she told me about the different color codes on the picture and how that would give the true meaning of the visions. It's misinterpretation. I think it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's similar to being lost in translation. You know, you just, yes. you don't know how to translate and mm. orate what your, what the images are. And I think in that case, it's with, with some mediums or psychics, it's not that they don't see it. No, they're just not putting it out properly. Mm. Therefore, I've done that. <laughs> well, it's like like the English yeah. language is extremely difficult because it's just one word can mean three things. It's ridiculous. Mm. So oh. I think when somebody is trying to put across what they're seeing, if mm. if they're not putting it out, it could just be one word mm. that can change everything around, and people mm. will hang off of every word. Mm. A medium or a psychic will tell yes. their clients every single mm. word. Mm. And they're not, I don't believe readings are necessarily meant to do that. I believe no. they're meant to guide you, but it's mm. your free will and your choice. You can walk out, you know, of your door that morning and turn left instead of going right. Mm. That's going to change your outcome very easily. Yeah. Mm. That's where the thing mm. ch changes on a dime. Psychic mm. readings change on a dime yeah. comes from. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But th then again, it's uh, probably also, uh, say, uh, different qualities of readings there because something uh, is more superficial and some is more, uh, say, what is called uh, stable. Uh, if, for instance, uh, I have furniture in my garden, I, I, I'm able to move that. You know, I can have it on the right side of my garden or the left side of my garden. But mm -hmm. if there is a little rock coming out uh, from the bottom of my garden, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. able to move that rock so i think some things uh that is my understanding at least at some things in time are right. rock solid but right. other things can be moved you know uh, i also use sometimes the metaphor if you sit on a train uh, mm -hmm. you can choose to be in the passenger wagon you can be in the you know uh, restaurant wagon you can be in the toilet you're still on the train <laughs> yeah. but you can, yes so right. there is a both uh, freedom and limitation in being on that train and i think also it's a bit like that with life, you know, and also some th uh, things I think you cannot avoid, say, for instance, physical death, but how you deal with that, that yeah. can be ch chosen I, to some extent, yes. I also believe that with psychic reading and a mediumship reading are two different readings. Um, yes, a psychic yes. will get what looks like, a lot of people don't understand that they think, because I always say a psychic is not a medium, but a medium mm. is a psychic. And mm. they're like, what does that mean? Mm. And a psychic will have visions and see things and some of them have psychometry where they can feel and, and mm. get something. But a medium's com communicating with the other side. Mm. So the mediumship read might be, you know, a little bit more accurate because they're getting it from your past loved ones or someone mm. who's trying to assist you. And again, mm. it depends on the question. Mm. So... So yeah. now it's it's very uh, you know I'm still struggling a bit with the English language. There are some amazing stories I could have told you, but I think I will somehow stutter too much that the, it's not really going to be enjoyable for our audience. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have it's had some want. some some uh, really strong uh, say readings uh, long back uh, that mm -hmm. I have uh, recorded on audio cassettes. You know that have been yeah. so stunning. And um, mm -hmm. uh, as I use 
to say uh, because you can choose something but not everything uh, that is uh, for instance you can choose to play the national lottery but it's not so easy to choose to win the national lottery you know right. so if a psychic says uh, to you that this and this will happen and that involves other people or other say happenings that you have no control whatsoever over mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. so uh, and it seems to be able so the, the really good say mediums then will be able to present you to that kind of facts about the future mm -hmm. which is probably not the future in a linear a linear sense but is right. a, yes. a, a, say a kind of a part of this big eternal now that we probably would have perceived the world to be if we were able to, to do open up really so mm -hmm. so so that has uh, uh, you know because uh, also as western uh, human beings we like to think that our will is fully free and i can say whatever i like anytime you know some yes. things I, you can deal with that way, but I think also I cannot choose the Mount Everest to be there or not be there, you know. I can choose to climb it or not climb it or climb the left side or the right side, you know. I can choose to fly over it. So there's lots of choices, freedom right. left there, but I cannot choose it not to exist in a way. So I think we have to also have a bit of uh, humility uh, with dealing with some things like that. At least uh, I have uh, felt that some uh important parameters in our life we could call that karma for instance mm -hmm. uh, they are there more or less but you have to choose how to deal with them but you cannot right. say they do not exist yeah mm -hmm. i agree i mm. agree to to say you know definitively that something exists or doesn't exist i think there's so much about everything within this universe and on this planet things that happen that people have no explanation for. I don't think you can say a hundred percent that it exists or doesn't exist. We're only, we have a very limited understanding mm -hmm. really, uh, even of the human mind, science will say one thing, but until you've actually are able to utilize it, it's always going to be, you know, an area of study mm -hmm. because if you really master it, you'll know how to use it. Well, yes, there is so many, you know, if you read uh, uh, Renaissance philosophy, uh, Pico della Mirandola, for instance, Italian Kabbalist and philosopher, you got the impression you can be always, uh, almost, you know, uh, omnipotent in a way as a mm -hmm. human being. I don't know, it, it, it might be a kind of... Uh, yeah say uh, overblown ego also so but i think of course we have much greater power powers than we say from day to day think of but still there is a limit even the best magician or the greatest mm -hmm. medium will physically die uh, so so um, i try to find uh, say balance between opening mm -hmm. up to great possibilities and great mm -hmm. powers but at mm -hmm. the same time you know we are still only human and uh, errare humanum est is to say Latin, you know, it's 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 human to, to make uh, errors and uh, not master everything. But, so so, yeah, so uh, I tried to, to, to balance there. And, uh, you know, I got friends do, into ritual magic and so, and I feel they are somehow, you know, boosting their ego too much about, uh, on the behalf of their powers. Uh, mm. uh, but, and on the other side, you have people in Christian communities, you know, oh, no, I'm li just little and I'm so weak, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm sinful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so the, these two Both other sides are, of the coin. Yes. 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 You know what's and frightening? It, excuse it, me. Yes. No. So what's frightening is you're talking about, you know, we have all of these abilities and, and, and everything you've just said. Mm hmm. But now they're talking about connecting the human brain to artificial intelligence. Yes. Can you, what are they really trying to unfold? I mean, mm. if we don't know our true potential, it's pretty, you know, some people might think, oh, you know, that'll give people opportunities and, mm -hmm. you know, connect to the internet, connect to, to something so much bigger. But mm. why? Can it, <laughs> what can they manipulate with that? Can they open up these abilities? And next thing you know, we have a bunch of superhumans just running around or can it open up the possibilities of, of um, utilizing more of the brain or can they just dumb us up even more? Mm. It's frightening when you think of, yes, like, yes, of yes. the potential of the mind and mm. they want to connect it to mm. the internet and a computer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I, I was reading. I want to live in a cave. Yeah. 
<laughs> one of the old Batman stories, you know, the comic stories in the in the magazines yeah. was uh, when the early computers came, and you know, and somehow the computer drained the intelligence uh, yeah. from all the persons there. But that computer became an evil computer, you know, and using right. the right. super mental powers, you know, to, to to taking over the world. I think Batman stopped it, but uh, you know, it was right. closed. So. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a tech freak or like that. I know a guy I usually admire, Deepak Chopra, he seems to be quite, say, positive towards that movement, but you know, it's not to my taste. So, Yeah, it's, it's a bit frightening to me. I think I'd probably want to go and live in a cave until they figure it all out. <laughs> yes, I'm yes. just, I'm a bit leery about what may come of it. Mm. Um, I know last time you also touched a little bit on on the occult um mm -hmm. how does the occult um how do you blend that in with let's say because i mean it's pretty ancient you know it goes back occult magic dark arts you know these ancient magicians go back to the druids it goes mm -hmm. back to the time of the pagans even how do you associate that with modern day like parapsychology parapsychology seems to want like the very scientific basis mm, mm. Um, uh, that um, is uh, yes uh, i totally agree uh you know it's i, I compare it a bit with say uh, uh uneducated blues musician to to a uh, very theoretical classic uh, professor mm. in, in music theory you know uh, one might be the better guitarist but the other had uh, you know all the theories so yes. parapsychology is a bit like that you know it's a very uh, rigorous science and you have uh, clear protocols and methods and uh, and you know uh, what is say the, the 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 drawback of that is it's not um, uh, existential enough in a way mm -hmm. because um as uh, Jan Carl Gustav Jung found out that these phenomena strong paranormal manifestations tend to appear mostly when you are in kind of existential engagement in your life if you mm -hmm. are for instance in a deep crisis or so then these uh, powers will be activated much more than if you are sitting guessing cards in a laboratory, you know. So mm -hmm. that's kind of superficial. Uh, say so. The raw material uh, for occultism and 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 parapsychology uh, is the same, really. Uh, this expanded consciousness and this mm -hmm. kind of strange abilities, telepathy and clairvoyance and precognition mm -hmm. and all this. So it's the same material, but the dealings with it, it's it's quite different. Different, but of course, parapsychology uh, can make if that is. A goal then uh, these phenomena are more accepted uh, within say the scientific community and mm -hmm. at least uh, among say normal persons without uh, say spiritual interests and so uh, mm -hmm. a friend of mine he is much into statistics for instance he is a kind of little genius in mathematics and when he read mm -hmm. the statistics for parapsychology you know Ryan experiments when drawing 10,000 cards and then getting a, a percentage uh, a high score for, for hits uh, then that was quite convincing to him Mm -hmm. as a mathematical mind so a statistic is for him but for most people i think it will not be so uh, say whether or not uh, what the mathematics will tell you is not important for them but as i said the, 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 the occult tradition is very existential and uh, mm -hmm. learning practical how to deal with this and also how to use it uh, eventually in the uh, hopefully for mm -hmm. healing and uh, guidance and uh, and uh, giving advice and helping people with their existential path. Uh, parapsychology has not that kind of uh, task in its self-understanding in a way. Right? No. Yes, so yeah. it's much more detached. So mm -hmm. they're dealing with the same field, but uh, with different angles. Mm -hmm. So do you think then that the paranormal, the word itself is just sort of like, like, a buzzword it seems to be something that's more modern you know like paranormal i think that the word became very very popular around the 70s you know when you had the school mm. experiment and things like that um but i mean i don't i try to dig back into like beyond that mm -hmm. and it's, it's just not like a terminology that was all that popular. I mean, I could be wrong. I haven't well, uh, it. the word paranormal, it, it used to be supernatural in the world. Okay, there we go. Yes. So uh, the word changed. paranormal yeah. is a French origin. It was uh, launched about the 1880s uh, by some oh, there French you go. researcher. Yes. Okay. So, so, and, oh, and, and, you know, wow, Jack. 
Yeah, that far back. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, at that time, uh, uh, France was still somehow the, the hotbed of science in a way. Uh, so uh, it was before uh, the USA took over as the leader in, in, in the scientific world. So, so they tried to somehow make a science about uh, these supernatural uh, phenomenon and therefore they called it the, the paranormal and uh, as we mm. know normal is normal and para mm. means is greek means beside so yes. it's meant to be a neutral term of mm -hmm. what is beside considered beside the normal so yeah right so it's a european term because i know here in the it, victorian era of the 1800s mm. everything was uh, along the lines of the supernatural spiritualism yes. Yes. you know the, the victorians would like to go have picnics in cemeteries they would like to go to to seances it was mm. like an entire movement that mm. abraham lincoln used to go and and participate in these type of seances with his wife harry houdini was trying mm. to debunk everybody yes. <laughs> and, you know, harry houdini is just like yeah the heck with this i'm just going to debunk you all you mm. know it became his like his mission mm. um yeah but you know there, it was a whole movement here too but i just didn't see the term attached no. in the western world like it just mm. seems like all of this in the west was considerably different mm. than what was going on in europe Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 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 there were uh, some. Um, uh, there has been a strong uh, tradition for hypnotism in France, um, and uh, it started probably back to uh, to this Mesmer, uh, Franz Anton Mesmer, who was a German, but he was living in France, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was in the 1780s uh, and thereabout. He became quite en uh, mode in, in in Paris, very say popular. And and also they had um, strong tradition there was, uh, I write about him, he was an Indian monk, really, but uh, Abbe Faria. Uh, he is also, uh, say, uh, Alexandre Dumas in, in uh, uh, the French writer, uh, writes about him in the, the, the uh, Count of Monte Cristo, a very famous novel. Mm -hmm. So Abbe Faria, who, he was a hypnotist, very famous, and also you got later um, uh, this, um, uh, 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 what is called, uh, uh, Richer, uh, he was also a Nobel Prize uh, winning doctor, medical doctor, uh, mm -hmm. and um, he also was the first doing statistic experiments with the paranormal, uh, that is the parapsychology then. So uh, Richer and uh, also was uh, Freud's teacher, uh, Sigmund Freud's teacher in hy hypnosis, what is, uh, or what is called now? Uh, oh. I forgot uh, French names, you know. So, but at least uh, they have a strong, say, scientific tradition uh, in in France uh, about the dealing with the paranormal, and and uh, very closely linked to hypnotism very often because under hypnosis people tend to get more open and also reports of 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 that kind of phenomena were quite common in in say French hypnotic t traditions, even academic traditions. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, because here it's just, I think it took us, a, it always takes us a while to catch up. England, <laughs> I mean, England was deep into parapsychology. Oh, yes. Like really early on with, with experiments and um, even there, all the investigations that went on were done through parapsychology. It was mm. all parapsychological research. Mm. There was no, they didn't tag it to be anything else. And one of the, one of the, the, the cases that I'll, I'll, I'll mention, if you are um, familiar with it, was the Enfield Poltergeist case. Mm -hmm. yes. It started off with a parapsychologist mm -hmm. who was in there doing research before they brought on um, Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were here in North mm -hmm. America. And then they went over with the whole paranormal type mm. of yeah, investigation yeah mm. yeah so apples and oranges yes mm. yes and mm. uh, and if you see look uh, you told uh spoke about britain here um the mm. spr society for psychic research which is still in Yes. Up alive and kicking today. Uh, they had a kind of a split tradition there because this was the scientists on the one hand, uh, members, and also the spiritualists, you know. And yes. it has been so, but they tended to go more toward the scientific side, you know. And mm -hmm. some of the spiritualists, they did not like the, say, 
disrespectful methods for research, you know, doing mm -hmm. laboratory research on this holy phenomena. We shouldn't do that, you know, they felt mm -hmm. it disrespectful. So, but uh, it has been kind of a mixed bag, this SPR, because the, as I said, uh, some of them were quite uh, spiritualistic, but uh, mm -hmm. they became what is called uh, uh, the, the, the yeah, uh, they, they yeah. became fewer and fewer, and the, the scientific aspect became stronger and stronger. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like the combination because um, you're familiar with the Philip experiment. Uh, yes, of course. Yes. Right, um, and and that I thought that was really well done, and it seemed to have a little bit of a blend of both. Oh you know, yes, it had yes. that spiritualist aspect to it, but yet it was very, very a very regimented and well-planned oh, experiment, yes. mm. and it was successful. Oh, yes, I, I was quite impressed by that, and it was run by a professor in, in, in medical, uh, what is called uh, statistical analysis and genetics, and yeah. he was he was British originally, I think, but left yeah. uh, and went to Canada and, and conducted, it was at, at Toronto, wasn't it? I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, and, and uh, I, 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 he started out as a professor in Cambridge, if I don't remember wrong yeah. here, and he also conducted uh, quite uh, impressive experiments with the famous English medium and healer Matthew Manning. Right. Uh, yes, and uh, he even, you know, put some kind of sensors on his brain, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. measuring the brain wave patterns and all that kind of thing. So it's a uh, rigorous science, but as you said, also open to the spiritual aspect. Yeah, it was really, really well done, much like school. Sorry, Maria. No, 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 it's okay. Yeah. I, this is a little bit off. I wonder if all of these mediums from the past that are so well known, because right. there weren't that many that had come forward, if they would be still considered as famous and as accurate nowadays with so many people coming forward. There's a lot of good mediums and psychics mm, mm. out there and a lot of incredible healers. But of yes. course, they wouldn't be able to do what they did if what they do if these other greats didn't pave the pathway for them. Mm. But I just sometimes wonder, would they still have known about them? Would they still be as popular, or as interesting had they lived today? It's difficult to say, but uh, of course, great spiritual masters as the Buddha and uh, and the Christ, you know, they are. Mm -hmm. I think they would have impressed people today. <laughs> so uh, that, that yes, but I mean, like Baba Venga, Nostradamus, um, mm -hmm. you know, this other medium that you refer to in in England. I wonder yeah. if they would have been as you know as, as famous as yeah. as revered now, mm -hmm. because there are so many people, and yeah. just like just like maybe someone who's really really good in our time right now would have been much more recognized then because they stand out more because there wasn't as mm. many and it Might was much <laughs> uh, that's right because religion yeah. had a huge influence then mm -hmm. now and now it's an understanding of metaphysical and spirituality as opposed to religious yeah. and you know it, it, fundamentals it, it might be also depend to some extent on on, on coincidence for instance i have also been quite a lot into music and you can say if beethoven had lived today would he be as great as he is you know wouldn't he disappear mm -hmm. in uh, in a flotilla of other competent jazz musicians or so or would he still be a kind of unicum in our time it's difficult to say but it seems to be kind of unique power oh. in his music mm -hmm. so and it might yeah. be also with this but of course there are also other uh, uh, composers that somehow uh, disappeared uh, from history uh, mm -hmm. that a musicologist uh, will find and certainly oh why did we hear about him you know yes because he yeah. became uh, he, 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 you know he was uh, uh, he was sacked uh, because he was uh, opposing the king he worked for and thereafter nobody heard from him even because he lost all his money and beca became sick and died you know that's kind yeah. of story also mm -hmm. so so um, it, it, and also i i have come to to consider more often uh, uh in the modern times i don't know if it that's right but i'm probably influenced by friends of mine living in the east that uh, karmic aspects might be a part of this as well you know mm -hmm. seems mm -hmm. to be a good karmic pattern of some people to gain fame and fortune and so and uh, and others not and if that is just and so uh, it's it's so big questions i don't know and, uh, no mm -hmm. i know i think about that sometimes i have weird thoughts now with the with the composers greats like mozart beethoven and tchaikovsky and chopin 
Yes. I believe they paved the way for music, <laughs> to be honest yes. with you. Because yeah. piano forte was not what it is now. Uh, exactly. Then. So mm -hmm. yeah, I believe I they were put there for a reason. Now with Excuse music me. and and what we call the paranormal because i believe everything has to do with vibrations and frequencies yes. therefore yeah. i think music paves the way on many levels mm. especially with frequency um yeah. especially so even, voice even, too, even vocals as well that's right. singers. but beethoven was yeah. was deaf in one ear yes. and he would play with his head down on the piano for tone yeah. And then, tone you know, and vibration. Like, yes, right. and, so, and and the famous American, you know, uh, she was deaf also and blind. Uh, Helen Keller. Yes, that's right. Yes, she enjoyed music by just feeling the that's vibrations. Right. Yes, so exactly. I had a yeah. deaf cat that used to do that. It oh, would, it would lay on a speaker and it would just, yeah, it was just strange, it was very soothing. strange. Yeah, to it was watch. Yeah, to watch. Yeah, it was probably yeah. soothing for the cat. But it's all, you know, it's all about frequency and vibration. I've mm. seen spirits just, you know, doing like investigations, for example, um, where we're, we're working with trying to get responses. And mm. I remember in one specific area when I, it was in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And there was like maybe, maybe if we were lucky, we had access to one radio station. And okay. I used a piece of equipment working with, um, radio frequencies to see if we mm. could get the spirit to communicate because the spirit apparently according to the homeowners loved music yes uh, so oh, nice so i would just ask questions such you know questions as oh you know do you like jazz can you mm -hmm. show me yes. so, like, play something with jazz i'm like i have one radio station uh -huh. that was being picked up the chances of my getting anything in the normal spectrum would yes. be slim it played mm. like rock you know that yeah, that yeah, was yeah, it yeah. Mm. i asked questions based on jazz or i'd say things like oh you must love the king elvis presley came on yes i went jazz it was like there was something like dean martin i i, I came up <laughs> with i said yeah give me some more old blue eyes bam yeah. dean martin country Fantastic. bam country and i'm thinking i know i do not have all of this at one station and i couldn't oh. pick up anything uh, else but yet Very this was on demand oh fantastic it it was different it was a different mm. different mm. type of experiment mm. it worked out very much in in the favor of the investigation have you written about this or have you published it in any way no but feel free <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't write. Everybody says you're gonna you write need a book. an idea for another book. <laughs> I, 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 write a book. I say that as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time to write a book. <laughs> okay. Are you kidding? Maybe one day. I mm -hmm. have a foot in the grave by that time comes out. But okay. um, but it, it was an interesting it's an interesting experiment. So when you know when we talk about music and frequencies and vibrations mm -hmm. and, yes. and I, I believe that spirits do somehow connect. Mm -hmm. Or the otherworldly definitely have a way of connecting to all of that easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can yeah. heal the body with frequency. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Music is a classic healer. You know, in the old mm -hmm. Greek rituals for healing in the temples, they use music. Music is a lyre. Singing right, balls. You know, and... Yeah. They use singing balls. Uh, I have uh, one Buddhist singing bowl here. It's it's beautiful. Shell of Hesha. It is. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Oh yeah, they're beautiful. <laughs> I love show and tell. <laughs> I know it's great. <laughs> show and tell works for me. I'm a, I'm a visual learner. There we go. <laughs> I have right. I have a singing bowl, but I'm not going to get up to get it. <laughs> it yes, sound. that's what I have. That's a yeah. singing bowl. I have the same one, the little one. So soothing. Yeah. Well. I, I, yeah, we can hear it very faintly. I have the same one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They, they are very soothing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. See, people, that's how you zen out. That's how I you have, zen and out. You, and you can get them on Amazon. Just say. 
<laughs> I know. I bought it from. Uh, we have some Buddhists in Oslo. They have been uh, going to the t uh, Tibet and, and and bought them there. We have also uh, yeah. a, a center for uh, Tibetan Buddhism in Oslo called Karma Tashiling, and mm. they have rituals and they're using those bowls. And, yeah. Yeah, and if you if you can't um, purchase one, you can go on YouTube and find some yes. back. That's right. And listen to them. They're very very healing. They're amazing. If you just take your do your yoga breaths and listen to that and you'd mm. be surprised how amazing that is for you. Mm. I yeah. also have a kind of uh, uh, wind harp here, uh, which is supposed to hang in the garden, you know, and uh, the wind will move. And uh, there's a tubular bells uh, with an old Chinese scale, uh, pentatonic scale, and it's so harmonious, you know. I, uh, I once had a visitor here, and I just, you know, moved this little so, and she went immediately into kind of trance, you know. It was kind of special. So, yeah, music really has something. Mm -hmm. I think I had been mad today if it had not been for music. You know, uh, I come from a kind of kind of difficult childhood in a way, so, so I used music very much as a healer in my own life. Me too. Yeah, you even too, listening yeah. to yeah. binaural beats, you know, just yes, there's just so much to it all. And I think I know. Well, I know with many people that I've worked with over probably the last five years, especially. Um, and learning more about frequencies and such. Yes. Um, especially I find with people who are grieving now, you know, in the last two years, especially making that connection and getting people to start listening to different healing frequencies. And it's mm. amazing. You know, they'll, they'll write me back and say, Oh my God, that was just amazing. You mm. know, what else would you recommend? And I'm just like, mm. you need to go with what you feel, try yes. different ones and see how it makes you feel inside how it makes your spirit feel how it makes your body feel um you know listen to it before you go to bed mm. and speaking of that you may mention uh of a gentleman who works um or made comments about dreams and dream interpretation do you feel we communicate more at night like, do you feel that we are we're doing like some people believe it's they call they'll call it like i mean our producer calls it dream weaving people connecting up mm. in your dreams. yes 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 uh, uh, yeah, I'm quite convinced. I have uh, also one chapter, or at least a big part of one chapter, about a dream telepathy, that famous experiment conducted by Professor Stanley Krippner. Mm -hmm. And uh, clearly, uh, I cannot go into the methodology, but they, they, they say, tried to project pictures uh, into other people's dreams and in a laboratory and then they woke up the sleeper uh, and the dreamer and uh, he or she had to recollect which picture uh, was say predominant in that dream um, <clears throat> quite um, say uh, what is called uh, le, what is called uh, lots of labor to do these experiments of course but uh, uh, they did uh, for about 10 years they did these experiments it's, wow. uh, very, yes so it's solid uh, statistically corroborated uh, the ability to say project images into people's dreams and uh, mm -hmm. of course you do this spontaneously if you for instance uh, three o'clock in the night uh, thinking about uh, a loved one uh, a relative or a friend or, or, mm -hmm. or a lover like that i think it's um, it's uh, it, it, chances are quite good that on some subconscious level if it's mm -hmm. a normal person that person will perceive that uh, but also if it is a kind of awake person i will not use woke person here but awake person uh, that yeah. person will it will even be able to to uh, be, be able to 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 say um, uh, be conscious about that kind of, of communication uh, i don't know if i told that last time I, I i went to in gestalt therapy for many years with an old wise woman and mm -hmm. she was quite uh, savvy at these things um, because also a friend of me, uh, mine, uh, went to the same therapist. Um, she was a Gestalt therapist, but she also had uh, read all these books of Castaneda, you know, Carlos Castaneda. Yes, uh, yes uh, social anthropologist working with the shaman in New Mexico. Um, wow. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> A long story about it. Some say the books are just fiction, others mm -hmm. say uh, they are real, but some say it doesn't matter because uh, the phenomena are real, even if there's a biography of, of this shaman he works with uh, uh, is not. Mm -hmm. say factual anyway uh mm -hmm. i was uh, as i said me and my friend we, we were going to the same therapist and we were on a cafe uh and um 
and we were discussing our experiences with this uh, very clever uh, and very savvy uh, therapists. And uh, next time I, uh, I, uh, I went to her, I said, uh, last week, uh, me and uh, my friend Swain, we were, were uh, talking about uh, you. And then she tuned in. Uh, was it last Wednesday about 12 o'clock? <laughs> <And it, laughs> wow. Was, yes. Uh -huh. so she had felt that, you know. Right. So was, uh, and uh, able to, to even pinpoint the, the time it had happened. So, you know, uh, so we are That's communicating. Uh, yes, it's fascinating. And uh, we were, uh, I think we are communicating. We are dream weaving all the time. Uh, yeah, again, Carl Gustav Jung said there is always going on a dream deep down in our subconscious. So we are connecting this. But when you are relaxed, of course, your mental filters uh, uh, are on a little vacation. So you're more easily take in that. And that is also a functional aspect. For instance, if you're out driving in a traffic, you know, that demands your attention. So you should not focus on your 30-something family members or like that. You could mm -hmm. crash uh, easily. So you have to navigate your daily life. And then these uh, impulses should normally not, say, take up too much of your field of vision in a way. Mm -hmm. What yeah. happens to those moments where you're driving home and you don't even understand or comprehend how you got there. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know. That happens a lot. You Recent know, where you're time. on a highway and you're Alien an hour drive and all of a sudden it's like, what do you mean it's my exit? Mm. You know, we have a lot of highways here. So it's okay. like, that's yes. not, we have yeah. six lane highways from the 400 series. That's not okay. something you yeah. want to be doing is daydreaming. But, I was uh, I, I was thinking more like driving in a city, you know, with uh, honking cars all around, and you have to. Really yeah, no, that. I wonder. <laughs> I'm I'm mm. wondering about that. I'm thinking out loud because it's happened to me a few times, and I know Michelle and I have talked about that, and we always wonder: is it lost time or are we daydreaming? Like, uh, uh, please repeat the last words. Oh, we're one. Like I always say, is it yes. lost time, like an ET mm. kind of thing, mm. or oh, yeah, yeah, are yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah. daydreaming? Mm. Because we we literally don't understand no. how that hour just passed. Uh, I understand. I think I mean, it might be just, uh, I have not gone really deep into this, but you know, the, the humming of the engine, that's just kind of a little singing bowl down there. So I think that might stimulate your alpha uh, frequencies or even your theta frequencies. So therefore you go into this kind of meditative state if you are on a long country road, you know. That, that okay, is what I, so I, scientifically, I, yeah. That, uh, my truck, my truck uh, is really loud. I drive a Hummer. It's loud. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's it, it is humming then. Yes. <laughs> but it, it's a loud <laughs> okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know always uh, I uh, I told you that uh, I feel sometimes a, a bit autistic in a way and they say uh, children that are autistic they like to sit uh, in front of the washing machine going round and 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 then mm -hmm. you have the meditative yeah. aspect you know so I think we all on on one level are some kind of a susceptible to that kind of stimulation and as i said with the humming engine uh, and not the honking and all the other cars you know i yeah. think you that will somehow uh, tr trigger this frequency following response yeah. in a way focus mm -hmm. frequency vibration it's also the things that are necessary to be under hypnosis yes which we talked about yesterday okay. yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's interesting again frequencies yeah, yeah. Yeah, frequencies absolutely. are everything michelle sent me some really good ones that i can just put on my bluetooth speaker and just leave in the background while i'm because i love to cook so i'm always in the kitchen okay. so i'll just leave those frequencies going mm. in the background mm. and they're so mm. soothing mm. Mm -hmm. i remember last time we discussed also this uh, being neural beats uh, i used uh, yes. holosync, holosync quite a mm. lot and also this other famous system hemisync you know so uh, it's uh, you can do so much with frequencies Binaural are huge for yes. me. Yes, I love the these binaural beats um, meditations. You put them in your ear, and you're supposed to fall. It's supposed to help you fall asleep at the end of the hour. I mm. am out cold before five minutes. I'm just okay. gone. Yes. Uh. I'm just fine. So they work uh. for me. If they it don't work, then I know that something's around me disturbing me. But yeah.
Yeah, I understand. When I started, I I got quite uh, fast. I got three uh, notable results from being your bills. It was I was uh, very often sitting in a quite crowded cafe at that time, you know. And when people are, you know, suddenly they are pushing you with the chairs or you know, scomping and uh, so so I. I'm only human. I became irritated, you know. But after <laughs> using uh, the binaural beats uh, for two months or so, I became glad when people were touching and pushing me. You know, it, it was kind of experience human contact in a way. So it yeah. changed my attitude That's towards consciousness. The right? Yes, yes. And I think I think humanity is going to need something on loop right now going back to the public and crowds because we've been out of it for so long oh yes yes i think yeah. it's going to it's going to be something that's necessary yeah but i, I think don't know. people are also just losing their minds out there because after you know two years of of not being in all of that yeah. i just mm. noticed it on the roads People okay. are just like in a hurry. It's get out of my way. I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Chaos. yeah. You, you yeah. can't catch the virus by driving next oh, to someone. Yeah. Just saying, I, relax. I, 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 I see more the other way around that I am, I am, uh, seem to be very keen on hugging people because I'm so long time <laughs> since. <so. laughs> well, I'm Italian. We hug everybody. We hug everybody. We meet people in the grocery line and we're hugging yes. them and kissing them. Yeah. We're terrible. Yeah. But it's a, I terrible. think it's a, no, I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I just, I feel like the world needs a, a frequency on loop right now. That's just mm. my opinion. But I, what I wanted to just uh, bring up here, uh, probably you have noticed that um, it's about two weeks ago, there was an open hearing in the Congress in the United States That's about right. UFOs. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's another one coming. Yes. So yeah. uh, that is very, I, I heard uh, the whole thing, in fact, because it was uh, transferred, you know, via YouTube directly. So mm -hmm. so it's very, very interesting new sign, you know, and th these are people, and it was what is called the bipartisan also, not just the Democrats or the Republicans, but they had a committee agreeing on, yes, we have to look closer into this. So um, mm -hmm. our time is coming, I think. <laughs> well, I think when they did the preliminary disclosure um, last year, Yes, they, there were a lot of questions raised, and it was just a prequel to the congressional hearing. Mm. But it's I I I I like to think the time is coming. I mean, they they've always had projects going, mm. like Project Blue Book. You know, yes. that was the la one of the last big ones. Yes. They've always had something going where mm. they're looking into it. But when you have people like astronauts, and you have people. Yes like um, Paul Hillier, who was our, our Minister of Defense for many I years. I remember you told me about yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot of whistleblowers coming out, including past presidents. Mm, yes. <laughs> so, I think their non-disclosures have come through, right? That's why. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's very difficult to say, well, we can't say for sure. Oh, shut up. Yes, you can. You just will exactly. not. But now everybody's got one of these. And people are yes. getting their own sightings. And they're mm. putting it out there. Mm. Yeah. What is interesting, as you said, uh, astronauts and so I uh, statistics shows mm -hmm. that about nine percent of American astronomers have seen UFOs. Nine percent mm -hmm. of astronomers. That's pretty substantial. Consider Get the percentage on pilots. I bet you it's close to a hundred. Mm -hmm. excuse, excuse me, please repeat. Yes. Pilots. Pilots, pilots. Yes. pilots. Yes. 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 the percentage yes. on pilots, I bet you it's closer to 100. Mm -hmm. there's yeah. a, they're, they're very, you'd be hard pressed to find a pilot that hasn't had a, mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. sighting. And mm -hmm. they've spoken up, but they're not, they're not no, recorded because there's so many of them. Yes, uh, exactly. And but what happened, uh, you know, uh, uh, after this hearing, uh, it became clear that they now have in place, uh, uh, say, uh, report form for that kind they of thing. And, and yeah. they encourage the pilots to fill in this and not deny it. So it's a kind of a watershed uh, mm -hmm. change here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for I everybody, so. now they're saying, we want to know your experiences. Yes. So it went from men in black showing up at your door saying don't say a word to we want to know <laughs> yes oh yeah <laughs> so, yeah that, that's really something I, new. I understand the concern you know not all of these uaps slash ufos can be um determined they don't all know what it is they want to make sure it's nothing another military yes. established it not coming into mm -hmm. the airspace i completely understand all of that but mm -hmm. at least now maybe they'll stop discrediting everybody's yes. having sightings because yes. 
it is a lot of the average people who are out there who are seeing things out of the mm. blue, taking photos and like, oh, what's this? They're, mm. I think the eyes are on the sky a little bit more now. Uh, yes, definitely. I think also. So I, I found it uh, very, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a great expert on UFOs myself, but I find it encouraging that the Congress had this it's hearing. A step. Also. Yes, yes. It's a step. Yeah. Do, you, do you find any connections with um, UFOs and, and the paranormal? Um, uh, obviously, there yeah, are connections there because many mm -hmm. of those people having had this kind of sightings have, say, felt telepathic connections. And also, mm -hmm. uh, Jacques Vallée mentioned a very famous case from France. Um, mm -hmm. It was a, a doctor. He was not just a kind of a normal doctor. He was kind of what is called uh, professional for the whole county south in France. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and he had uh, some kind of illness. I don't remember exactly what kind of illness it was, but he had a sightings uh, of t two UFO, uh, UFOs in his garden. Mm -hmm. And suddenly there came some kind of ray from one of those into his uh, abdomen. And oh. after, after that, he was healed. Wow. Yes. There we go. There, there's a lot of stories um, of, of healing um, people have been healed from their cancers and other mm. life-threatening diseases um, or illnesses. So I, I don't think all the stories are bad by any means. No, no, no. But and, then and, you, and, the sleep paralysis thing is a big one that keeps coming up with yes. um, parapsychologists will have their view, you know, mm. with science, the paranormal mm. has their view. And again, mm. ufology has its views. This is yes. what happens just before a sighting, mm. you know. Whereas the paranormal say, no, that's just, you know the Hag syndrome. Something is pushing mm. down on your chest. This is yes. a demon. This, is, mm. you know, mm. it just it, it goes on. There's just mm. seems to be little tidbits of some and, and 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 of course uh, they are not mutually exclusive. Those uh, aspects they can right. uh, complement each other also because not right. every uh, sightings uh, are, are, are somehow. Uh, have connected with it uh, paranormal phenomenon other than the sighting itself and uh, mm -hmm. and most kind of as I said my focus in my book is mainly on uh, on say uh, clairvoyance and uh, telepathy and precognition and also mm -hmm. to some extent uh, healing and psychokinesis and these phenomena are say statistically speaking not very closely linked to UFO sightings, mm -hmm. even if many healers have had that kind of sightings also. So it's not a say, necessary uh, connection. So uh, as I said, we, I think we have to, to, to uh, the famous uh, physicist uh, Niels Bohr, quantum pioneer, he said in, uh, he had a kind of a motto, uh, it was in complementaribus veritas, in the complementarity there is the truth. So I think mm -hmm. we have to be open to many aspects and that can run parallel to each other. Mm hmm I agree. I mm. agree with you. Um, we have to do a station and sponsor ID. Yes, okay. I'm right that time. waiting for you yeah. to finish okay. up. Yes. Okay. You are listening right now to The Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Pisano. Coming to you live from, oh, actually pre-recorded okay, today. Well, we are from, live. No, we are live. Oh, on we, are live. we are live. We are live in New Orleans on yes. 105.3 <laughs> FM. We have Dr. Simonson in the house tonight returning guests and our conversations always fascinating when he's here stream or listen to our archives on any platform that you normally use a big shout out and thank you to the amazing people at Folgers coffee sponsoring our show from day one we love you and we thank you so much also a huge thank you for our intro and outro and his voice dr snick the sonic surgeon justin snicker award-winning composer and musician you can find his music on Amazon and Bandcamp and find him on Facebook and Instagram. Check him out. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you were making mention of, um, <clears throat> of shamans. Yes. Do you find that, um, because I get stories all the time, that the indigenous people mm. have more experiences? And if so, is, do you think it's because they're just more tuned in? to the mm. planet, to the earth, to, to, mm. to all, just nature on average. Mm. Yes, uh, that that is a very important aspect. And also uh, uh, there is uh, um, 
uh, again, uh, it is a complicated uh, theme, uh, but uh, I think uh, the openness is there and the, the lifestyle also, uh, as I use uh, as an example, if you're uh, the Sami tradition, you know, Sami is the say native people of north of Norway mm. uh, it's um, probably they are coming from Siberia or from Mongolia even say many many thousand years ago but they have a very strong tradition for these phenomena and if you are for instance they are uh, they are uh, famous for herding reindeer you know on, uh, on the tundra or what they call it um, mm. so if you are out in the night you know and you see just snow all along and uh, uh, all uh, and uh, there is the reindeer they have went to sleep you know you can hear the breathing the soft and uh, calm breathing of the herd of reindeer you know and mm. it's just the snow and up is is the st uh, stars and the moon you know That's that kind of meditative state you know you will be more open to subtle impressions from from uh, the soul or, or this mental internet as i call it then uh, if you are in new york and the uh, cars all around and uh, flashy ads ad boards all uh, so so the disturbance is much less in a traditional uh, mm. say indigenous lifestyle uh, if you find in the amazon jungle or in the, in the, the tundra in the in the uh, polar uh, areas or if you go to the Kalahari desert with the Bushmen mm -hmm. or uh, the mm -hmm. Australian desert uh, desert with the Aboriginals, you know. So I think that uh, b both uh, the culture and the lifestyle is, say, predisposed, uh, make you predisposed for these phenomena. But then you have uh, this um, interesting aspect from uh, Rudolf Steiner, uh, the, say, the father of uh, anthroposophy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think many will know Steiner uh, through the Waldorf school, uh, uh, and yes. also yes, uh, yes and also uh, uh, bio uh, dynamical uh, agricultural you know where you use uh, uh, natural fertilizer and uh, you somehow cultivate the earth in a spiritual uh, manner so mm -hmm. Rudolf Steiner a very great spiritual teacher and also he was uh, inspired by uh, theosophy from uh, Madame Helena Blavatsky and also lots of different European uh, uh, European esoteric traditions and he said yes uh, th these old uh, shamans they had these abilities very strong but mm -hmm. they had not developed their abilities for mathematics. They had not developed their abilities for, say, uh, conceptual philosophy and all that. And mm -hmm. he felt he might be wrong in that. Of course, that is uh, up for, for discussion, definitely. But his view of history was that we went from this, say, spiritual uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, existence uh, where you yes. had uh, these abilities. And then you have to learn mathematics, learn philosophy, learn mastery of the physical world as we have done here in the west and mm -hmm. then we have to again open to, to spiritualize learn. our science and to spiritualize our mm. egos and all that so he felt it was a long line of development there so for instance um uh, norway's most famous psychic earlier uh, he was uh, called marcelo hogan extremely impressive guy and has uh, written a lot about him and he convinced lots of doctors about his abilities as a healer and a clairvoyant uh, but he had uh, according to steiner uh, this guy, um, who was very respected here in Norway, uh, he had this old kind of clairvoyance because mm -hmm. he was not very clever with philosophy and he was not say he was not a very modern man in many ways he was a very uh, uh, in the best sense of the word a very primitive soul in uh, living in close contact with nature and all that so so Rudolf Steiner it was uh, strange uh, as I found it first was mm -hmm. critical of this guy and I found that he felt that this guy had this um, um, primeval, uh, original clairvoyance, but have not been willing to develop it into a kind of modern a kind of clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. uh, it might, might be seem far fetched or too, too theoretical and so, but perhaps it's a way to somehow uh, legitimize our uh, Western perspective that yes, we lost something but by leaving the traditional indigenous cultures that the shamans uh, still are, are into a, a large degree, but we gain something also, and now we have to 
get back what we have lost. And again, in complementaribus veritas, in complementarity, we have the, the truth. Mm -hmm. So that might be, uh, uh, say, perspective where you can include both the, say, traditional spirituality and also modern science and, and mathematics and philosophy and that kind of things. So I tend to somehow like Steiner's perspective there, but I will not say, of course, it's the only way to, to view this. We can say it's we, oh, we have lost so much. We must go back. But you know, you cannot un in, uh, invent the television. You cannot un invent the telephone. You cannot un invent the car. And so, so it seems to we rather have to go forth than to go back in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I also think when we get back, you know, oral history, I, I believe you you go way back, pre, yes. you know, pre. Of religious mindsets and a lot of the indigenous again let's go back to the druids not a lot yes. were known about them because they had to say with in oral history there's yes. not a lot of writings out there um you know again the pagans uh we get into our north american indigenous mm. the indigenous all over the world why is it like you make mention well okay you know mathematics science it never mattered to these people no. They were always in touch. They would see something that looked unusual, like we call them cryptids, you know, mm, like yes. we can get into Bigfoot. We'll use that yeah, one as an example yeah, yeah. because, you know, when you're living in these remote areas, chances are you're going to see something along those lines. It was quite normal to them. Mm. Like, you know, the little people, you know, mm, they, yes, they would yes. just see them. They would exist with them. They were aware of them. If you go back even further to Druids, you're, you're, drink, you're, you're dealing with the Fae. Like, mm. you know, this, these were all mm. acceptable. It was just all acceptable, but mm. in comes academia. No, mm. these abilities now get pushed aside because you have to learn science. Mm. You have to learn mathematics, which where is the place of these things of acad academia? But uh, again, uh, uh, spirituality. Uh, 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 but you know, things always uh, start uh, with a question and a lack, as you say. We pose yes. the question: you know, where is it? So that yeah. question will uh, again make us uh, uh, more open to it. And uh, as we know, uh, and I quote in my book also, several quantum physicists are open to these aspects. You know, so yeah. and also if you go into some uh, parts of modern physics, you have a multi-dimensional world. You know, so mm -hmm. you can uh, you there might be a place for fairies. You know, they might be in a parallel world that somehow on some level interact with our, our but mm -hmm. still in uh, on their own premises in a way so so i think modern physics can uh, strangely enough perhaps but uh, reopened uh, the portals to, to to these worlds it might be able to at least well that's i agree i was going to say maybe it's a dimensional thing yes maybe you know that some of these beings do just come in and out of portals either yes. way you know all of, of these more primitive people who were not like you say affected by you know the technology or being in large cities we're having these experiences and we're mm. coexisting with mm. not just some of these beings but there's a lot of documentation about them coexisting with beings from the stars mm. so again you know dimensional interdimensional mm. multi-dimensional are we getting to multiverses are we getting <laughs> yes 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 I, I tend to like that perspective because uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you go back to Jacques Vallée and the famous yes. astronomer yes. And, uh, and you ufologist uh, he uh, he was mm -hmm. one of the first that somehow uh, he was one of the first somehow um, what's it called uh, uh, doing serious science about this phenomena, but then he was also, uh, and by by that he was kind of uh, uh, heretic uh, within the scientific right. community, but right. then he became uh, heretic in the UFO, uh, ufologist community as well, because right. he said they are not from the Pleiades, as you all believe, they are from a parallel dimension. Right. Uh, so, so uh, and I, I feel that this seems to be a more because it seems that something like pops in and pops out again you know yes. it seems like uh, if i have my one hand here can we see it on the screen yes yes I, yes. yes here it is you know those hands they are somehow interconnected but they are still mm -hmm. separate you know right. they, they they share a meeting point but there right. are also lots of separate so so two dimensions somehow slide into each other like that and then they 
slide mm -hmm. out again. So I think it is a kind of multidimensional hypothesis seems to be the most fruitful here. But of course, it's mm -hmm. extremely complicated. Uh, I can just recommend the work of uh, Jacques Vallée because yes, he's a yes. genius. So, yeah. mm. it's, 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 it's very good theory. Um, even her, her producer will laugh when he talks about ghosts and spirits. And he'll mm -hmm. call them dimensional bleed-throughs. Uh, yes. I tease him about <laughs> it. I'm going, oh, dimensional bleed-through. But realistically, yes, yes. it's only answer. Viable. But it's his only answer. I know it's his only answer. <laughs> okay. well, he's got a science degree. So of course he's yeah, gonna lead I'm still questioning that, that one, Joe. Mm. But mm. but it's it would make sense in a way. Uh, I tend to think so. And on one level, I also tend to think that uh, you said uh, everything in a way can be understood as uh, vibrations. Uh, uh, and also, I think information somehow is the some kind the most transcendent uh, category. So mm -hmm. I tend to think that both space, time, causality is somehow a, a derivative from from uh, information. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so, uh, and uh, if that information is there, you know, it can manifest in that world or in that world or in that mm. time or that time. So, so uh, we tend to somehow get fixed into our, uh, that is a kind of uh, uh, old philosophy from uh, Immanuel Kant that um, space and time, you know, it's mm. our matrixes, uh, it's the way our consciousness make an intelligible world for us. But mm -hmm. it does not mean that from uh, some, deepest perspective they are not all that real you know it's just right. our way of viewing things uh, mm -hmm. so uh, both the the, the central uh, categories was um, uh, where mm -hmm. uh, space time and also causality and and we if you have a car crash for instance uh, where did it happen space when did it happen time Mm -hmm. What was the reason? Causality. You place everything you experience within time, mm -hmm. uh, space, and a cause, you know. But right. that is, it's, it's how we work in our day-to-day -day life. But as I said, the deepest reality might be much more say complex but also simple in a way as i said yeah. for instance uh, my body is an expression of information which information mm -hmm. uh, uh, of course my genetical code so yes. my physical body is in a way more real uh, than mm -hmm. my genetical code because you can touch it you That's cannot right. touch my genetical code but on another level, it's less real than um, uh, my uh, genetic code because this mm -hmm. body will die. But I might have been able to pass on my genetics to my children. That's right. Instance. Yes. So, and, so that kind of information as a transcendent category is very appealing to me, at least, and, and think it might be uh, mm -hmm. able to explain uh, much more than just the simple, uh, say, example I used here with my body. You know. So, so and, do you uh, think we're living maybe simultaneous realities? Some people will tell you we had two realities. One's kind of like messed up, like this one, <laughs> you yes, know, yes, with yes, war yes. and you know all all mm. of this hardship. Mm. Whereas they say we're living potentially there's a simultaneous reality. It kind of feels like it has a matrix feel to it. It's like we got sidetracked somehow and something mm. split, and now we have there's this other reality that we should where we should be. <sighs> Yes, that, you, that looking glass thing. You yes, know? yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, it's extremely. I, I, I tried to use quite a lot of time on multidimensionality, you know, and seeing yeah. interviews with famous physicists and so. There are so many theories here, you know. Yes. So, uh, and yes. some people say that if it really is another dimension. Right. Then you wouldn't know about it because then it could not connect in any way to our dimension. So that might exist, mm -hmm. but per se, uh, per, by definition, you right. will never know about it because otherwise it had been somehow part of your own extended dimension, you know. Mm. So uh, I'm a simple guy in that I want to <laughs> describe uh, <laughs> phenomena that are usually overlooked within science, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are so many possible, you know, that's also a philosophy of science. It's a theorem yeah. that uh, you have a set of data, but mm -hmm. that set of data can be explained uh, from the perspective of many theories, you know. So which one uh, is correct or most correct, I, I'm not uh, the, the the guy to say. It's, right. as they say, it's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, I love bouncing different ideas around. Oh, yes. Because yes. The, there is there is so much out there. But there's a lot of our listeners are all all different 
levels of, mm -hmm. of you know, their, their own beliefs. And sometimes you get some pretty interesting questions mm -hmm. come through. So just trying to get in there and, and spread it around a little bit. Um, so as we're slowly, you know, coming up to uh, the end of the show, what do you have coming up? Do you have, are you writing another book? Because I know this other one was like full. <laughs> but you leave <laughs> well, a lot of, of room for growth in it, like to keep going. Uh, yeah, I, I might have told you, I am in the process uh, of it, uh, getting, it, it was originally many, uh, a number of years ago, written in Norwegian. And mm -hmm. it was quite uh, laborsome to get it translated into English and, and uh, released. Mm -hmm. uh, it was first released by a quantum physicist, uh, English retired, uh, he was living in, in Italy. And then it's like now in 2020, it came on Watkins. And uh, last uh, autumn, it came uh, out in Czechia. And uh, now a Spanish publisher is looking at it. So, so wow. I feel somehow my task is to spread the word as far as I can. In different you know. languages. Yes, yes. That, that is one. And uh, also I work on some other other projects of a more mundane nature, you know. Right. But as related to these themes, I, I feel that spreading the word as far as, as possibly can mm -hmm. uh, by participating in your uh, wonderful yes. show, for instance, yes. 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 And yes. and also, uh, there's a practical aspect of this because uh, the chapter nine of the book is about intuition. And uh, as opposed to many, I believe not that uh, intuition is just uh, uh, capitalizing on, on early experience. I think uh, in, a true intuition can be opening up for clairvoyance, telepathy, and all these kind of mm -hmm. their normal abilities. So how to use your intuition in a powerful and fruitful uh, way? Uh, mm -hmm. As I say, uh, how... Uh, which job to apply for, which city to move to, which people to hang out with, which subject to study. You know, as I said, mm -hmm. my friend today studying this animal psychology and suddenly yeah. being uh, able to answer on the serotonin and melatonin, uh, things she hadn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, so she was mm -hmm. able to use her intuition in a very fruitful way for to pursue her goals in that direction, uh, apparently. So so the practical aspect, uh, uh, as I uh, used the, the, the metaphor with the violin again, I mm -hmm. try to learn to better how to play my existential violin uh, using mm -hmm. these abilities in my daily life. That is also a very important aspect. It's Evolution. Not just Right. Yes, personal evolution, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and getting more fine-tuned and being more able to, to communicate better when I meet with people and uh, what is the need of that person, and that person might have uh, perhaps an uh, illegitimate need, then I can detect that more easily also, you know, to, to use this full register of, of my soul in a better way, you know, so I try... Right. A parallel with my book and the theoretical aspect, there is this very practical aspect of the paranormal as well. Right, right. So basically, keep working on awareness and evolution. And I think yes. it all comes down to the collective consciousness, what you put into it, what you can pull out of it. You put something, positive vibrations, positive mm. frequency, positive thoughts. Mm. Um, you should be able and you should work on having that come back. Yes it tend to be kind of echo effect on these things. Right, right. And for those, and in closing, because we come across a lot of people who do this, um, a lot of people in, in the paranormal um, who think that they've got a lot of things going on from a paranormal standpoint, let's say, you know, disruptive energies or spirits are actually projecting energy, mm, which of yes. course we call psychokinesis. Yes. What mm. would be your recommendation on a identifying it? Because a lot of people never heard of it. I mm. have to, I, I'm, I try to be quite delicate and I'll send people yes. a link to psychokinesis <laughs> and say, if you see this, because yes. Neely and I have talked about this a lot, we've got to be yes. delicate with this. So I'll yes. send a link and say, if you see any similarities in here, you may yes. want to consider exploring. I, I don't think they're reading it. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's it's it, <laughs> like if you have a a, a a dead drunk person entering a room complaining about <laughs> the stench of alcohol. Right. Yes. <laughs> right. So right. he brings it with him into the room in a way. Yes. yes exactly. uh, uh, we need well, to use that that metaphor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> need to use that next time. It. Yes, so, you yeah. need to identify it and then. Yes. You know, uh, 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 I, I, I yes I, uh, uh, I uh, say my way in this has involved quite a lot of therapy because as I said I come from kind of difficult background so I suffered a lot of uh, 
anxiety and depressions and neurosis mm. and all that. So I worked with a wise uh, transpersonal therapist for several years. It was extremely helpful for me. Right. Uh, and then you find uh, where uh, where am I? Where is the other person? Where is my uh, say bodily? Where is my reading, my grounding, my center, and all that mm. kind? Of, to, to get to know yourself better. So a good transpersonal therapist open for these aspects of reality. I would recommend that. Uh, also meditation, as we discussed, this uh, being your beats can be very helpful and mm -hmm. also get a dog and walk the dog in the nature you know and hug a tree and you know heal, heal the vibes yes so Grounding. so so uh, it's there but you have to use it again the violin if it just lays there and you don't use it and you don't train of course mm -hmm. you don't make any false notes but you don't make any true no, true notes either you know so you have to, to put yourself out there and uh, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and work on 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 things as i said a good therapist is a good way to start and also a kind of spiritual practice if for, for my yoga meditation and like that but always link it up more or less to sound uh, and harmonious other people because uh, what you can get in the exchange will be invaluable for say discerning yourself as a Mm -hmm. as a growing person so right. so some people you know i know people some people just smoking hash is sitting meditating down in a cellar you know i don't mm -hmm. believe that's the most harmonious you have to connect with the world in a way and as mm -hmm. i said a dog a nature a therapist will be very helpful for many people right excellent thank you so lastly tell everybody how to find your book Yes, this beautiful covered book can be found on Amazon. I think that's the most uh, convenient place to find it. And my name is Terje Simonsen or Simonsen. Mm -hmm. And the book is called A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal. Right. I love it. I love it. I'll make sure that the link does go into... Um, every, it will be everywhere that um, you can get the show, uh, anywhere in the description. So just go look for it. And your social media is there also. So people can reach out at that point. Yes. <laughs> get a singing bowl. <laughs> I had to go get right. mine. <laughs> I know. I can go get a singing bowl. Let's get on that. <laughs> So thank you so much. Thank you. For, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for joining us. And, and I will be in touch. And this will air this evening. And um, you'll be able to see all the comments. It will air even in the Facebook stream everywhere where okay. uh, there'll be comments there for you to go and check out when you're in a different time zone. <laughs> yes, as you sleep. <laughs> exactly. Yes, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Thank you. Have bye a good bye. night. Hi. Hi. Well, we have come to the end of another like amazing uh, segment. Uh, he's always such a pleasure to have on. So big thank you uh, to him for joining us this evening. If you guys have any questions, pop them in because he will be able to go and check it out. We'll make sure that we get the link over to him and uh, that way he can respond directly. So remember... Um, to subscribe. Wherever it is you're going to be watching this, please go in and subscribe. Next week, uh, we are going to be bringing back Sean Williamson and Wayne Murphy. They're going to be talking about um, Team Templar North America. And that essentially is going to be uh, hit and miss because it can only say so much, but it's a project that Amelia and I are proudly a part of. Uh, Hamilton White is partly um, a part of it as well. And uh, I can tell you it's like some fascinating things going on in Wisconsin. So please tune in. Next Thursday, we welcome back Charles. Oh, I don't know if we welcome back Charles Christian. I think I may have been presumptuous on that. No, it uh, is next. Oh, it is. Okay, good. Because. Um, oh, no, no, no. No, it's not. No, it's See, Toby look at Johnson. That, guys. I did a big faux pas. It's actually Toby Johnson and Brett Eisenberger. And they're going to be talking about their Bigfoot documentary. Yes, that's going to be like pretty wild because I have been, you know, just, just Googling and researching and it looks pretty pretty fascinating so we haven't done a bigfoot crypto thing in a while so this is going to be kind of cool anxious to see what they've got going on there so tonight catch amelia and i in chat and i will be in the soundboard to get your your comments and questions up 
and we will see what we can do moving along with respects to getting what we can answered. So until tonight, guys, behave yourselves.